Good morning. Welcome back. Good to see you. It's, you know, the early morning show. The t-shirts have come in. So for those that have waiting for the t-shirts, they have arrived. So I will be shipping those out to the contest winners. And I have a few extra. She ran, uh, the person that's making ran out of, um, well, the, the, her supplier ran, ran out of black t-shirts. So, but they had ones with pockets. So that's kind of neat. So I said, hey, well, give me, put in, do, do some pocket tees. So you have that on the front and then the back has that. That's pretty neat. I kind of like that. So yeah, I said, well, I need a pocket tee. That way uh, they can see that logo on the back. So that's kind of neat, huh? Uh, so I will be getting those sent out here this week to the winners. And I know a few of those are going over overseas too. I've never sent a t-shirt overseas. We'll see how much that one costs. But um, yeah, kind of happy to get that done. And I got a few extra uh, that I guess I can sell. Hey, I guess we'll get into some records. I don't have not much big storms you saw that if you saw that midweek one uh you know the tornado whistles went off that's kind of cool i actually went to the basement i go yeah i never go to the basement so i went back out and looked you know it's like ooh, is there a tornado come on you know you don't don't stay away from your windows well i stayed away from the window i went outside so i wasn't by the window wasn't by the glass i figured that was a lot safer believe me i i did kept thinking god the thing if it comes down it's just gonna tear off the top of my house and Frickin' records will be gone again. I mean, it kept running through my mind. I kept going, all right, if I lose a collection a second time, do I really start a third time? Do I really? You know, big question, huh? Cheers. Got the coffee. Let's do it. First albums. I'm going to show you. They came from Jacob. New Sounds and Old is his channel. New Sounds and Old. He is out of Denmark. On the island of Mon. M-O-N. Now, of course, no matter what, however I pronounce it, I will not pronounce it right. It's one of those O's that have a slash through it. I've, I've known Jacob. Oh, my. Since I've been doing this for, you know, working on three and a half years, Jacob's been around. Uh, and he has been highly influential, especially on Facebook and on Instagram. And Jacob's not shy about sending me something. Hey, you need to get this because he's into world music. But Denmark, Denmark has incredible music. Just incredible groups that I really, really love. And one of the albums Jacob sent me, which, please, look at, Jacob doesn't post as much as he used to, but he still will post some. So just go ahead and sub to New, New Sounds and Old Love. Great guy. I really, really like Jacob. Nice house out there on this beautiful island. <sighs> Wonderful album. This is Baby Wood Rose. So those that have followed me for a long time, you know I love Baby Wood Rose. And it's, a, again, out of Denmark. They formed in 2001. It is um, the leader of the band, and he has a number of different bands. Is Ulf Lorenzen, or as he calls himself, um, was it Lorenzo Wood Rose. Also on here you have... Ricky Wood, Wood Rose, um, who um, goes by the Moody Guru, and there is um, Rocco Wood, Wood Rose, Wood Rose, Wood Rose, um, calls himself Fuzz Daddy. So those are the three original members. Now things have changed, and there's a picture of there. Isn't that neat? So what would you think about? What do you think about when you see a cover like that? It's psychedelic, baby. It is psychedelic. It is garage rock. It is incredible music. Uh, Baby Wood Rose, for those that don't know, is a psychedelic drug out of Hawaii that they were popping when they did a lot of this. And they just went and they pounded it out. This album, though, are is early versions from what came out on their first album. And their first album was blow your mind and as this one here so that was their first album 
this is the early versions of that song. And this thing is incredible. God, it's so damn good. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's mind-blowing, shall we say. It's like 15, 1960s style psychedelic garage rock type songs. Uh, I mean, they're raucous. They're fast. It's just, it's full of energy. It is so exciting. Um, I mean, these, I said, these, these guys were tripping when, when they, when they were doing this thing. And it is just such, it is such an outstanding album. I, I really, really loved it. But Rhea, I am a huge fan of Baby Woodrose. But they're, not all their albums are equal, like any group, right? And there's some that are better than others. This is one I thought was very, very good. It originally was released in 2007. I mean, 2011. And so this is the reissue on it. And I, I, I couldn't be more delighted to have this. I mean, uh, and Jacob knows I'm absolutely fan of uh, Florence and his solo album last year was my pick for album of the year for me. I just, it is just, that's not it's sitting out there. I can't see it, um, but it's, it's, it's on display because I really like that album. So very cool album. sent me <laughs> I just show talked about this on a contest entry the tremolo beer gut the tremolo beer gut I bought this originally my first time I bought this I didn't know they were from Denmark I didn't know anything about it I bought it because of the name it looked like yeah that looks like kind of like a 60s group right well, it's not. Uh, they formed in, in 1998, again from Denmark, uh, from Copenhagen. This is, it's, it's surf music, but there's a lot of, in, in, um, in, in, in Neil Morricone, you'll hear that kind of, that guitar work going on here, along with uh, just kind of like an alt-rock type feel this it's it's instrumental music though you know you'll hear them kind of yipping yap in there a little bit uh surf and western you know you have surf and turf this is surf and western <laughs> it's probably a good way to talk about it um they've made i think they had seven albums out there same picture on every album. They asked him, "Why is the same picture?" And they go, "Well, it's because um, it's a good-looking picture, and we look young." So they just they just change the color of the album. I mean, that's 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 pretty funny. The the label for this the label is on. You see that? Ah. Crunchy Frog. Crunchy Frog. That's their label. For those that are fans of Monty Python, you remember the famous Monty Python skit of Crunchy Frog, and, uh, which is what they named, named, named it after. So that kind of shows their tongue-in-cheek humor, but it's great instrumental music. Uh, you, I found, when I first found my first one of uh, their albums I bought, I found on Bomp Records. That's, that's where I located it. And I just really, really loved it. And so Jacob sent this. This is brand new. This just came out. In fact, Jacob um, found out that the guitarist from the group moved out to the island that Jake, yeah, Jake, Jacob lives on an island. He's, he's king of an island. Uh, you may not know that. He, he, he rules this island. And so the guitarist is one of his um, serfs out there. But he found out he's living on, on, on the island and he went over and bought the album from him. That's pretty neat. That's really, really neat. So um, he got it before it was released. Um, so he sent to these from Denmark, and that's very expensive to do. And um, Jacob, they were just these these two outstanding albums. I mean, 
it is my the kind of stuff that I mean I really really love something a little different a little out there a little fun Next, is was inspired by the Vinyl Douche. Vinyl Douche is making videos. Not He's not consistent yet, just as well, because he costs me money. Uh, it's Sam from the Vinyl Douche. Again, another channel. If you want to hear really what's happening, some of the newest music, you know, um, Barack P. Dub is another channel, which he hasn't put, put anything out for a while, but his, he always keeps me updated on what's coming out on music and uh, the vinyl douche does the same this was when he just showed the umbrellas and it comes on a beautiful coke i guess you know like an old coke bottle right uh vinyl san francisco band this is their very first album they actually had recorded it before the pandemic then everything went in lockout locked down and finally got released they did it themselves so it's a very do-it-yourself recording the band members were off from punk bands and they decided that they wanted to write uplifting melodies they wanted to write things that have positive lyrics and so they went from punk into this that is more um it was inspired by the Paisley Underground. It's inspired by 60s radio um, type music. It's it's beautiful. There's a lot of um, dream pop feel to it. Definitely dream pop feel. Uh, you, if you, you can find their, um, they have uh, YouTube videos out there of, of their songs. Just beautiful stuff. You have songs like uh, Lonely, which is the lead-off track, which is kind of a mid-tempo love song. And there's just this wonderful organ going on. Uh, the song when I had Autumn on here, um, it has like this really slow, funky number. Uh, I, I thought that sounded great. Uh, there is, uh, Galene was another one that I, um, that, 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 that sticks in my mind. And it's just this rocker that really does have a flashback to the 60s um, kind of ra 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 radio type hits. Um, there's, it's dual vocals going on on here uh and so it creates these great harmonies and it is it's just, it's just if, if you're a fan of dream pop that's something you really really enjoy you're going to love this and it really it wasn't expensive at all uh i don't know if it's still available or whatever but i found it and if i can find it then it can't be too hard uh, but wonderful album the group is the umbrellas the name of the album is the umbrellas so you can't go wrong um and when you try to google it uh, you get a lot of things about umbrellas so great stuff <laughs> Was fun from my local radio wasteland records someone brought in the very first dead can dance how cool is that and the condition on this considering it's an all-black cover is impeccable it came out on yep if I can get her out here, let's see, here we go. Four AD records. And this, this is wonderful. 
Dead Can Dance is out of Australia. Uh, they formed in 81. Uh, broke up in 98, reformed again in 2011. Time to cash in, baby. Uh, and that's great when bands can do that, when people actually don't mind when they reform because they really do want to hear them. I remember Dead Can Dance from the 90s. I had several of their CDs, but I've never had any of their 80s stuff or really knew anything about it. There's two main people. Lisa Durand, um, Lisa Durand, I think, and um, Brendan Perry. And there they are, the uh, two vocalists, and the main part of this. This music, Dead Can Dance, there's um, elements of goth, especially the early stuff, has that feel. But there's also, you would find, elements of um, European folk of all things, of world beat music, of ambient pop. It's all mixed in here. This, their first album, this came out in 1984. It definitely has a goth feel to it. It's, it has these kind of, it has, um, I would say, r real rich, warm um, vocals. And um, the songs, especially from Lisa, are multi-octave because she's able to go way up there. Think Cocteau Twins. I mean, and really think Cocteau Twins because they were on the same label. And you have some of that wispy, that high, blah, 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 uh, you know, kind of a vocals that you would hear on the cocktoo twins in a kind of feel. There is these shicks, shick, <laughs> thick shimmering guitars and um, this rumbling bass that's happening on the album. Oh man, uh, Musical Eternal was something I remember a song on here, which I have to remember by memory because notice they don't write the songs on there. Uh, but there was, um, had this dulcimer, this this hammered dulcimer that slowly kept increasing and increasing in sound as the vocals came up and got louder. Um, the song called Frontier, filled with tribal percussion, kind of a feel to it. Just great stuff. Um, really, really like this. But similar, it's 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 ethereal. It's goth. It's kind of similar to Cocteau Twins. Also, then they had, and so this came out in 84, and right after that they did this, and this is their and um, an EP that they did, Garden of the Arcane Delights. And on here you can hear them, they're expanding their music more. They're bringing in more different musical styles, and it is on an EP. There's more percussion, more almost world beat tribal percussion happening. And isn't that just a cool picture on the front of that? And they were nice enough to put on what is in the back. And, oh, well, okay, so the guy's not covering himself up. Oh, so it's kind of x-rayed. God, yeah, I show a naked lady on one. I show the naked guy on one. Welcome to my channel of um, erotica artwork. Yeah, erotic artwork. Uh, boy, well, I guess, luck, lucky I say it's not for kids, right? So there's that. What about that? Didn't notice that. Don't know if you got um, snakes and crap. Well, obviously, probably like Adam, right? Super stuff. Um, dead can dance. Really, really neat to have. Fun, fun, fun. This came out record store day. Everyone's showing it, but I'm just going to do it too, okay? And you know what? There's some of the record store I, haven't, I just filed. I didn't talk about because you've seen it one million times. You've seen this one one million times. But this is so freaking good. 
You know, it's from the Jack Johnson. It's from when Miles began, uh, when he really went electric, when he went funky. Here's what I will tell you. And I'm playing you a sample. You can hear a sample on here. Listen to the bass. That bass is pure funk. It is so driving. It is so good. It's what, to me, is what I like about this period. I mean, not what I like, what I love about this period of Davis. You know, from like 69 to 72, he made some of my favorite albums because of the funk groove and just this driving bass that's happening. Oh my goodness, I am such a rhythm kind of guy like that. Uh, for a guy that doesn't seem to have any rhythm, I like the rhythm. And it is really fun stuff. I really, really like this. I have this stuff um, as I have the Jack Johnson box set. So obviously I have this music. But I wanted it on vinyl. It is so incredibly good. So much fun. Just, damn, it's good bass. Um, good stuff. Well, that was one of my favorite things from Record Store Day. Loved it. Final one I want to show. This was on Record Store Day last year, but they reissued it. What? Uh, welcome to the Interstate Managers. Everyone has, everyone has to know this one, right? We all have to know this one on beautiful red vinyl. Stacy's mom, she's got it going on. Um, yeah, and the rest of that thing. Fountains of Wayne, out of New York City, formed in uh, 95, broke up in um, 2013, uh, actually. They're one of their founding members, I believe the lead singer, Adam um, Schlesinger, he died last year of COVID. Isn't that sad? And he wasn't that old, but part of the millions of people that have passed of COVID. Wow. Um, so Fountains of Wayne, uh, they got that name from a, um, in New Jersey, there was a lawn ornament shop they saw. And the lawn ornament shop was called Fountains of Wayne. They go, well, that's it. That's the name that we need to have. I remember when this CD came out in the 90s. I loved it. I loved it for four songs. And it's the very first four songs. If you're going to put out something, give me the good stuff at the start. It was Mexican Wine, Bright Future and Sales. Stacy's mom in Hackensack. And those just, I mean, I, I would just listen to those four, quite frankly. I can't even tell you much about the rest of the songs. I've listened to all of it, but those four songs just were in my brain and I put them onto my iPod. On here, you know, actually they, um, they put out Stacy's mom and it wasn't doing anything. And then MTV got a hold of it. And MTV said, God, we love this thing. And they began playing that video over and over and over. And they made this thing into a big hit. And a hit it was. And uh, it was um, it was one of those CDs that I really, really liked. For four songs. The rest is good. But for four songs. Uh, I just thought was in incredible. And so I was super happy. I wanted it on Record Store Day. It was hard to find. It just, it went, whoosh, out, out the door my out uh, they got so very few copies you know re a lot of the smaller record stores can't get the stuff on record store day anymore i mean it's so sad it was built for record store days but the big independents seem to get all of it and the little independents you know the ones struggling to survive can't get it sucks um but this came out the reissue and i did see it was going to be they said it was going to be reissued and it was so happy to have Fountains of Wayne, uh, welcome to Interstate Managers.
what I have. I don't know. Do I got something else there that I haven't shown? Actually, you know, I also have the stack of records that I was going to show in other episodes, but I um, just <laughs> never, you know, I, 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 I run out of time. So um, uh, I haven't re-listened. This, this, this was nice. I'll just show you that one. Green on Red. This is a... Uh, just it's a group i love i love green on red no no free lunch from the 80s kind of an alt country type feel to them really fun music um i i got hooked on this thing a blind buy and man i just can't say enough for green on red there i showed them next year album okay that's all i have this week um super um that you join me i appreciate that i have some mugs a few of you I'm going to contact. I have some extra mugs. I think I might order some more because I've had more people interested. I got a few extra t-shirts. I don't know if there's interest. I'll, I'll get some more. It just if you're interested. Um, I try to charge just what I get paid plus shipping. How would I get paid when I get charged, okay? Uh, because <laughs> this is sure not a for-profit thing I'm doing here. <laughs> I, I would be very poor. Thanks for dropping by. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the samples. Have a wonderful week. Bye.